I grew up with these wi I grew up with them and they're all over Texas. They're all over Texas and you can I can't escape. I thought I was escaping no. and now she's here. Can she even come close to recognizing how enormously unchristlike that is? This isn't conservative motherhood. This is Calvinist North American evangelical religious bigotry. I love Dallas Jenkins after this. This is not God. In fact, what does uh, uh You just got clipped. We've all experienced being painted with a broad brush. Uh, it demonstrates that the Book of Mormon provides expanded knowledge of Christ while also harmonizing with the Bible. That's what this thing proves. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Midnight Strike Through Mormons. I'm your host, Cardinalis, and I'm joined today in the studio by Kwaku L and Brad Whitbeck. It was close enough. Yeah, it was pretty close. I've been called worse. <laughs> That's funny. Also, via the Zoom machine with none other than Lucas Hansen, head of the conservatives at BYU. And um, apparently, North American evangelical bigotry knows absolutely no bounds because uh, our boy Dallas Jenkins, uh, you know, creator of The Chosen, has just been uh, interrogated by our friend. Oh, Ali no. Beth. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> God, stop. Again. Again. Why? He, why is she doing this? Yeah. He, uh, he committed the crime. I believe. Well, actually, we're going to show you exactly why is Dallas Jenkins. Why, why is she famous? Why is. Wh yeah. What is she? Why? Why? Because she's why? employed by a Mormon guy. Okay, well, look, she has a big problem with The Chosen. As you know, The Chosen has made huge waves, and everybody's indicting Dallas Jenkins' Christianity because he's dared to associate with The Chosen. But they're also saying that the Mormon is, I mean, The Chosen is going Mormon. Is The Chosen Mormon? I, dare I say yes, because it's the closest uh, treatment we've had of Jesus Christ in cinema in a long time outside of official church publications. And the closer you get to Jesus, the closer you get to the Mormon understanding of him, because Mormonism is simply Christianity explained 100%. So anyway, we're Dallas gonna, Jenkins right now, if he watched this, would be like, Garden, stop. Uh, stop. Please, gosh. Stop. <laughs> You're I don't want to make another apology video. It's like when Kevin Hart was dragged out for that joke he made on stage and had to apologize 15 times until finally he ends up on Ellen DeGeneres. She's like, I I'm not going to apologize anymore. I've done it 15 times. So anyway, let's see what Ali Beth Stuckey's problem, Stuckey. I still don't know how you pronounce that. I looked it up and I'm pretty sure it's Stuckey. Stuckey. Okay. I still haven't found a person saying it, but. Okay, well, this is her beef with The Chosen and with Dallas Jenkins. I would have thought, I would have thought that, that you would say that the most controversial, controversial thing or the thing, thing that caused the most criticism was when Jesus said, I am the law of Moses. And people interpreted that as quoting the Book of Mormon, which I know that you've already answered this. It was not a direct quote from the Book of Mormon, not also a direct quote from Scripture. Right. So what's the problem here? Let's see. So I would have thought that that was the thing that caused the most. Yes, I would say you're right. That that became uh, one of the most controversial things. A rumor got spread that that's a quote from the Book of Mormon. I've never actually read the Book of Mormon. Uh, so I... I, you know, even if it had been a quote, I wouldn't have known it. It's not even a direct quote anyway. The quote, I think, for the Book of Mormon is like, I am the law. And I am the law. And the Wait, so neither one of them know the quote that they're angry at quite yet, but they've heard in the Twitter sphere that it might be Mormon. Okay, let's finish. Something. Yeah, yeah. So, so all that to say, um, yes, yeah, so that, that there were some major criticism and, and controversy came about from that quote. And uh, what's, what's, what's interesting, interesting about it is that Jesus in that scene... I do believe it's plausible for him to claim I'm the law of Moses. Uh, many, many people, many scholars would, would consider Jesus to be the living, breathing Torah, the living word, as they say, um, that, that, he were, that even though he has fulfilled the law, that doesn't mean the law is done. And, it, and of course, we believe he and the Father co-authored the law. So all of those things are, again, theological discussions worthy of, of, of debate. Yeah, I was about to say, and he also mentioned the word open. Does that insinuate an open can? I don't know. <laughs> Dallas Jenkins. I'm telling you. And in the context of the full scene, which you can see in episode three, is it's probably the most blatant declaration in the whole show of Jesus as God, Jesus as son of God, Jesus as the savior. Yeah. So a lot of what I, I kind of chuckled to myself going, a lot of the critics of this moment are yeah. actually, if they saw the whole scene, are seeing it's probably the most blatant yeah. depiction of Jesus as the authority that will ever show. Yeah. 
Okay, so they're just mad because he's right. Yeah, well, and, th- and successful. They and ma- they're not. Okay, so that's why they're spreading all this falsehoods. So it looks like they're mad about the quote. Famously, the number one question oh, whoa, that I got whoa, whoa, from whoa, 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 my. Whoa, hold on a second here. So they're really angry. Relatable. Her show's called Relatable. Okay, wait, hold on. I'm going to put I that up. I would not yeah. have guessed that. So, okay. Who's relating with her? Well, hold on. We're jumping ahead of ourselves. They're angry that, that, that Christ said, I am the law, when the, the, the followers of the Torah and the Sanhedrin said, you know, he was doing something wrong. So, Wait, isn't this like... That's more so a judge I actually, quote than a Book of Mormon quote. Never mind. Sorry. Sorry. Hit it. What'd you say, Lucas? I just happened to watch this episode from The Chosen for the first time okay. last night, and it's when Jesus Christ is doing the reading in Isaiah, where he says he's come for us to deliver the captives and all this sort of stuff, and then he says, in this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears, mm. and then they've added on the conversation of what's happening back and forth, and it gets more and more and more intense, the the Pharisee versus Jesus in front of this whole audience are like, yeah. it's like, are you really saying this? Is this what you're really saying? Dude, we're going to have to kill you. Are you really saying this? Uh-huh. And then Jesus, kind of the climax is him saying, I am the law of Moses. And then they freak out and take him out to try to throw him off the cliff. Okay. That's that story. So that's where they've inserted that. That sounds awesome. Now, yeah, it, it was a pretty good scene. I, I liked it. Now, here's here's the alleged verse from the Book of Mormon that this thing came from. It's 3 Nephi 15. And I'm going to read a little before and a little bit after so we have the full context that says, obviously, this is Christ um, to the Nephites in the Americas after his resurrection. It says, for behold, the covenant which I made with my people is not all fulfilled, but the law which was given unto Moses hath an end in me. Behold, I am the law and the light. Look unto me and endure to the end, and ye shall live. For unto him that endureth to the end will I give eternal life. So that's your quote right so there. So there's now enough the funny, of a closeness. There's that's like well, I mean, angry that somebody it said says the law. He's pass. talking about the law of Moses, and then it says, I am the law. And I don't know how people found this. Like, <laughs> who is was has it, memorized the Book of Mormon to know it that that's like just being an offender phrase forward. in there. Yeah, repeat that again, quick. That was a good point. This sounds like they're just being an offender for a word. That's that's literally what they're doing. Yeah, like exactly. Make five the words. man an offender for a word. That's literally what this is. <laughs> Lucas brings up a good point. Well, five words technically, but okay, we're gonna go back. To- now here's yeah here's the ironic thing because Dallas is saying, well, it's really ironic that the critics are really mad at this because it's actually one of the best scenes displaying Jesus's godship <laughs> or his authority over the law of Moses. It's well, it's even more ironic than that, Dallas, because the Book of Mormon. <laughs> Uh, it demonstrates that the Book of Mormon provides expanded knowledge of Christ while also harmonizing with the Bible. That's what this thing proves. It doesn't prove the Mormons are in bed with the chosen. It proves that the New Testament aligns very well with the Book of Mormon, even though the Book of Mormon says some things that aren't in the New Testament. Okay. Hey, that's a really good point, man. Back to being super relatable with super relatable Ali Beth Stuckey. The number one question that I got from my audience, as you can probably guess, was about Mormonism and about some recent comments that you made. You clarified those comments. You said, you know, there are some LDS people. By the way, I'm sorry. Maybe you guys didn't get disciplined by super snotty Karen middle manager principals in junior high and high school as often as maybe I did. But this is the way they all talk. I heard no. about oh, your yeah. little spot today, and uh, you and I both know that we have some um, disciplining to engage in. <laughs> you know, it's just this is literally middle management, middle America. No, I, I, can I just sit before? Like, okay. Notice how when the evangelicals lost their shite and started saying, "Oh, Dallas Jenkins quotes the Book of Mormon," they di- they were wrong, but they did it without really any knowledge of how big of an attack they are doing against one of their fellow brothers who is doing nothing but trying to create a show about Jesus. They're harming someone in their own family, and now they're br- parading him around via Chinese struggle session yeah. to get everyone, but you hate Mormons, right? You better say it. Say you hate Mormons. Yeah. Like, these people, like... But you passed the purity test, right? We exactly. don't care what you say, but that, as long as you hate Mormons. That's exactly what's happening here. They're like, we're going to make you jump through these hoops to prove you're one of this us This is still. what wokes do. Yeah. Yeah. This is, oh, you said something mean on Twitter when you were 15? 
go on every talk show and apologize, and then and then and make a charity, and then just you will ne- we will never let you forget it. And isn't this girl? She's supposed to be like a conservative talk show, right? Dude, this is the Blaze. You can't see the little icon on there because I got the nice little overlay. This is the Blaze, yeah. owned by Glenn she is Beck. Two seconds away from Glenn. I'd, Beck I'd say she's remember. like the conservative mom. She's, it's like the conservative mom thing. She's off because there's not that many women, and no. Candace is like she's not in the mom space really. She's in the Twitter fight okay, space. Dear, so yeah, dear listeners, dear listeners. Okay, this isn't conservative motherhood. This is Calvinist North American evangelical religious bigotry. Th- that's 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 different. That's totally a different thing. Conservative motherhood is applying Christ-like principles of loving your children, yourself, your community, your country, all of that. That 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 that's good stuff and operating from a positive place of love. This is a negative place of condemnation and bigotry. This is not conservative motherhood. I have too much respect for conservative mothers to allow Ali Beth Stuckey to be considered the voice of conservative mother America. She's- you guys remember uh, who's the who's the girl who's always angry? Tommy Lauren. Yeah. Yeah. You guys remember? I remember being in high school, getting on Facebook, and just let me tell you what, Obama, you stupid Obama president. I hate. I'm like, what is wrong with this chick? Like, what? She she's her gr- grown up a little bit. Like it is. Oh no, that- dude. Tommy Loren is actually a track. Oh, <laughs> is actually Garden. a lot, a lot come hotter. On. Okay, I don't know. Look, look, look. In a walk off, come on. No, first front, front. Garden. You know, okay. in a walk off. That okay. is. That means okay, okay. Can I bring in another what, thing? What? <laughs> can I? Can I bring yeah. this around? <laughs> Luke's right. Like, let me save this, please. <laughs> Doing you a favor, Cardin. So, um, the last time we met and discussed, because this was the episode right after the Lynn Wilder episode, okay. which we also discussed together. And that was pretty crazy. I had to cut stuff out of that because I already had 12 minutes of really crazy footage that we went through. Uh-huh. One thing that Ali said in that was, yeah, I go on Instagram and stuff and there's these moms and it's really positive and they're really put together and conservative. But then I see them posting a picture of their son going on a mission. Or they say something kind of weird about scripture or something. And then I'm like, oh, wait a second. Oh, they're Mormon. And then kind of the implication was like, we probably better unfollow them. We've got to push them out there. Don't get caught in this trap. They're trying to get you by being nice conservative moms on Instagram. They treat, like they treat the Samaritans. And Jesus Christ was like, one of the biggest problems in stumbling blacks you have is your misunderstanding of brotherhood. The good like, Samaritan is better than you are. Can she even come close to recognizing how enormously unchristlike that is? Ooh, that's a good question. For real. Uh, we how should are, ask her. How are you a disciple of Jesus Christ if you're judging people in that way? You're supposed to judge righteously. I'll, I'll only such push unrighteous back. judgment. For, I'll for only real. push back in the sense that if your theology believes that if you have a slightly wrong view of Jesus, you're going to hell, then I guess it would be fairly Christ-like to try to preserve people from that. But that's such a weird, messed up interpretation of scripture that... No, this, okay. this, is, this is annoying... Okay, uh, I have to phrase this in a way. Yeah. <laughs> this is annoying valley girl suburban Christianity. Mm-hmm. I yeah. grew I grew up with these wi- I grew up with them and t- they're all over Texas. They're all over Texas and you can I can't escape. I thought I was escaping no. and now she's here, <laughs> Ali Beth and, t- and by the way, Cardin, I I, yeah. I I compared it to Tommy Lauren because there's a video that Matt Walsh responded to where he rips Tommy Lauren because Tommy Lauren goes on live and talks about how all the men in America are a bunch of wimps because no open man wants to marry her. And you're going, oh you no, I can see every- why a lot of people would not want to marry her. Do you her? think it's all men? I didn't think it's you. I didn't think it's you. <laughs> okay, so let's keep going and let's let her keep digging. Let's see here. That I know we love the same Jesus. Oh, wait a second. Here we go. Sorry. She's getting the whole different Jesus thing. The number one question that I got from my audience, as you can probably guess, was about Mormonism yeah. and about some recent comments that you made. You clarified those comments. You said, you know, there are some LDS people that I know we love the same Jesus. And then you kind of clarified that to say not 
that LDS and evangelical con- or evangelical Christians have the same theology, but right. that the ones you know love the same Jesus. I mean, as you know, some people have a problem with that. Right. Yeah, what a horrible thing to say, huh? Mormonism does not believe that Jesus is God, believes that Jesus is a son of God and became like God, right. was actually a brother of Satan. So it's I not mean, the same the Jesus. It's not the, the same Father. God at all. Now, I'm not going to speak for the LDS church, uh, but what thank I was you. saying, and I think thank I, you, I think I, I think my wording was sloppy. I think that I could have clarified a little. Oh, he's already started with the apologies. Oh. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. He has it, to. He has no. to. Dallas, Dallas does this good. Like, just listen to the end, and okay. he makes a very good point. Okay, but better. I do have some LDS friends. Not all. I, I have I have LDS friends who I would say don't necessarily love the same Jesus that I do. I do have some that we have. I have spent hundreds of hours with Mm -hmm. i have prayed with i have wept with i have gone to israel with i have spent hundreds of hours of talking and i would say that those friends of mine that i know that i've spent tons of time with when we're talking particularly about jesus of nazareth particularly the jesus of the gospels it is the same jesus they they love that like the, the 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 show that like the jesus that i'm portraying in the show the jesus that we read about in the scriptures um, I firmly believe that, that and, and I, you know, in my deep conversations with them, that that we're when we're talking about Jesus of Nazareth, we're talking about the same one. Now, but they may not have John. Oh, one. she won't have it. She won't have it. Okay, well, listen to that. Yep. We're talking about the same one now. And and, and notice, but they may not, have. Yeah, uh, she's totally willing to speak from her ignorant position and say. Oh, Mormons believe this. And those hundred hours that you quoted as your authority and this entire three part series that you've made with other tens of uh, thousands of man hours of other artists. Mm -hmm. No, no, I can throw that under the bus because I read on Twitter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This this is the same (laughs) thing that we see with the wretched radio guy. Who, who was saying, like, here's what the Mormons believe. No, no, you don't know any of them. And Dallas Jenkins, he does. Okay, so let's see what he's got. she's got to say. What's her beef? Jesus and Nathar were talking about the same one. Now, but they may not have... John 1, that yeah. the word was God. That right. is not what Mormons believe. Well, that may not be the official statement of the LDS church, but I would say that I know some LDS folks who would say, I believe in John, John chapter 1. Look at that, dude. With all of his experience, never having read the Book of Mormon, the Spirit has testified to an evangelical man who knows what the Spirit is that Ali Beth Stuckey's hatred is ju- is not justified, not well, biblical, not true. You'll, you'll see what Ali Beth is doing, what vocab did to us. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, what about the Muslims? It's like we're like we're not here to speak on Islam. He's like, I'm not going to speak on the L- half the LDS Church. My friends I know, we've had deep conversations. We walked where Christ walked in Israel. We made a TV show together. We've had in-depth conversations about Jesus. I feel they worship the same Jesus. But also, but, but hey, hey, John 1-1, one, one, like... You're not in our club. It's You're crazy. not in our club. This is, this is, yeah, this is separate water fountains. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right, let, let's talk about John 1-1, one, one, though. Like, let's put this thing to bed right here. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, first of all, first of all, and the word was God. Those five words. It is one third of one verse in the entire Bible. That's basically their entire crux for what makes our religion so extremely wrong from theirs. One third of one verse. Yep. That's number one. Second, they believe you go into hell for not believing their interpretation for this one third of one verse. Which means the Catholic, that's a little in- <laughs> the Catholic actor who's playing Jesus himself in the series is going to hell. Maybe according wait, wait, why do you say that? Oh, oh, because uh, Catholics came up with the Trinity. No, that's what they're saying. No, no, no. But I guarantee you, she's not Catholic. She has a fundamental disagreement on the nature of God she, with the Catholics. I, I, I'm not Catholic, positive which flavor of evangelical she is. Some are chill with Catholics going to heaven. I, I others assume- are not. It would probably. I'd, I'd imagine that if she thought the Jesus it. actor was going to hell, that would also be a concern she brought up, which I haven't seen. So well, I, I would assume okay. they would probably find one third of a different verse to condemn all Catholics. I don't think they use John one one. They'd probably use something Paul says, because you could just at this point they just point to anything Paul says and goes, "Look, that's why you're wrong, you Seventh Day. I'm actually Jehovah's Witness. Whatever. Like that's kind of <laughs> how it goes." So, okay, keep going, Lucas. Did I interrupt you? So, so it's. 
why are they so like, oh, you're going to hell, you're going to hell for this? Is that in the Bible? Well, they'll pull up a couple verses that aren't explicitly talking about the Trinitarian view because that word isn't even in the New Testament. But if we go to the Athanasian Creed, the Athanasian Creed starts with the words, whosoever desires to be saved should above all hold to the Catholic faith. Catholic meaning universal, universal. not a specific church. Anyone who does not keep it whole and unbroken will doubtless perish eternally. Now this is the Catholic faith. We worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither blending their persons nor dividing their essence. For the person of the Father is a distinct person, the person of Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another, but the divinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is one, their glory eternal, their majesty co-eternal, and yet there are not three eternal beings, there is but one eternal be. That's what they're talking about. Even if their pastor doesn't directly preach that, because then it would kind of conflict with the Sola Scriptura thing that they got going on there. Exactly. That's where this idea comes from. It was yeah. developed. Oh, it, uh, this was what, like in the, the 300s, I think. It was developed a couple hundred years after Christ. It's been part of the church for hundreds and hundreds of years. So it's uh, this is almost certainly one of the things, the document that the Book of Mormon is talking about. When it's talking about those creeds that are an abomination. And, and yeah. by the way, it's so easy to understand. How could anyone be confused by it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's keep going yeah. here. Let's no, but see for what... real, I love that, Luke. I love that well, you bring that up because that's really the key difference. She has some extra biblical measure that she's judging us by um, mm -hmm. and using that to inform how she interprets John 1, by the way. And then here we are. And she's made that well, the standard that makes it so that we're not Christians. Cool. Yeah. So now, uh, if you're if you're a Christian, you might say, sure, it's one third of a verse. Sure, there's the Athanasian Creed, but you still haven't addressed the fact that it clearly states that the Word was God. Okay. Fair enough. Let's address and the word it. Word was with God. <laughs> it's okay. important to note that it was a. Christian teacher who attached the idea of a divine person to the word logos. That's the word being used there. Now, the word logos is used over 300 times in the New Testament. Only seven of those times is it translated to mean Jesus. It's kind of up to the translator to decide, is this going to mean Jesus here? Logos can also mean question, in, like inquisition, asking, declaring. All those words fall under that same word logos. So it's just how are we going to what are we going to um, change this word into when we're translated into English? And then are we going to capitalize it or lowercase it? Because that's also not something in the original Greek. So by the very fact that they chose to capitalize the word word and have it be mean Jesus Christ instead of what it generally originally meant, which was da, 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 um, reason in speech, divine reason in speech, instead of meaning that, it kind of developed over time to mean the person of Jesus Christ. So that's the word, and the word was God. Now, what does God mean? Well, the word God in Greek is theos and has been translated to mean the devil, lesser gods, and men with great authority. For example, when you quote Jesus Christ saying, you're gods, they'll come back and say, no, he doesn't mean gods like God. He means gods like judges. That's clearly what he's talking about, you stupid Mormons that don't know how scripture gets translated. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, that same argument comes into play here. And why did they decide that it just meant the eternal God, where sometimes that word can be translated to mean other things, and you get in the capitalization thing? And Again, the, if that they the translator of King James, the translators had chosen to make that lowercase, which they could have done. This entire argument goes away, both on the word and God, which were decisions in translation that were made for that one third of one verse in the whole Bible. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's 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 important to remember in these debates that the level of poeticism evoked in the Bible is should not be overlooked. I mean, clearly. This is not God. In fact, what does uh, uh, you just got clipped? Yeah, <laughs> you I just know. got clipped no, by know, the evangelicals. <laughs> <laughs> well, what does the New Testament also say? It says, although heaven and earth shall pass away, my word shall never pass away. Now, I don't know about you, but um, this book is a part of the earth. And when this is all done away with, does it mean that these pages will just be the only things floating? That's ridiculous. It means the voice of God, that, dare I say, revelation, will always be here. The word is just a way of saying, hey... This is the Father. This is God. And who was with him? The Son. And we believe Jesus Christ was Jehovah of the Old Testament. Yes, very strongly. So yeah. I, I just don't. And by the way, that, that's not. And we believe that they're one. It's we believe in the oneness. Angry, like, they're splitting hairs. They're, 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 they're jersey checking. And they're, and they're splitting hairs based on the Athanasian Creed, which was decided by the majority of people. Based on a, a vote, pessimistic a interpretation vote. 
of a Bible verse influenced by the Athanasian Creed. Oh, mm -hmm. Brutal. All right, so let's and keep philosophy. going here. Let's keep going and watch watch uh, Dallas Jenkins try to make sure that his Christian audience doesn't. He does a good it. job. Yeah. He does a good job. Well, that I may like put them guy. in misalignment with their church. I don't know. I don't get into the details of of whether or not what 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 their church thinks of it. I'm just saying. Also known as I don't gatekeep. Mm -hmm. I have you know I, I've literally asked those very questions to some of my friends and I've gone. Well, what do you think of John chapter one? I am in yeah. the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And they go. I believe that. I go, well, it seems to contradict this piece. And they go, well, that piece might, might've been misinterpreted by some people. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I, I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not disagreeing with you. I would say, if you said to me, does the LDS church as a whole, and does the evangelical world as a whole share the same fundamental theological beliefs about Jesus? I would say no, but I would say even within the evangelical world, there are evangelicals who I would say don't necessarily know Jesus as the Bible is portraying. We've all experienced being painted with a broad brush based on the 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 name of our tribe that we're in. Wait, and is that actual compassion? I've I've seen it happen multiple times. Yeah. yeah. And and like kindness and understanding. It's okay. actually not uh, maybe I'm what, like in Dallas, man. Maybe <laughs> what Jesus would do. <laughs> you know Yeah. Okay, no. he's almost sorry done. for cutting him, him off. Let's keep let's let's keep let him going. finish. I'll have him repeat that. We'll let him finish. That was awesome. The name of our tribe that we're in. And I've, I've seen it happen multiple times that because I'm part of a particular label that there's an assumption made about that I must accept or believe everything about that's typically associated with that label. All right. Dallas, I, I, I don't have anything to say. So this is great. This is awesome. He says, I'm almost sure that some LDS people don't know the same Jesus I do. And also some evangelicals don't either. Oh. Uh, yeah, can't argue with that. Can't okay. argue with that. So we're going to hit the next one. I mean, I'm pretty excited and to would... see where this goes after. This. Oh, she's talking to the next one. I don't know about that one. She let's... just wants him to confess that Xi Jinping <laughs> yeah. is a good ruler. <laughs> like this is a struggle session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. And I would just encourage people go back and listen to um, Thursday's episode. We talked to a woman who spent 30 years in the Mormon church and then became a Christian. And it's oh, not wait, wait, Lynn the Wilder. One that, the, Lynn Wilder, Wilder? No. The one no. that didn't know she needed a savior, supposedly after 30 years as a Mormon in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. She said she didn't know she needed Jesus Christ. That that episode was so riddled with blatant, blatant misrepresentations of what we actually believe and what things are actually like, she should take it down. That's literally if, like, if she had any commitment to like actual truth, that she would take it down. That's literally like me saying, oh, we know all blondes are bad. And if you go back and you reference that interview we had last Thursday with Courtney Love, you know, they're all drug addicted, have mental health issues. And at be you know, it's just like, what? Yep. Are you kidding me? OK, let's keep well, going. go ahead. Drive more views. Well, hold on. Hold on. Uh -huh, what? Mm -hmm. I um, if anybody finds this interesting, I'd just like to say go back and listen to the episode that comes out with every day, breaking down that episode on Lynn Wilder. Yeah, there, there go. Yeah, there and I tried to say it in her voice, so I had the same appeal. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. the audience. All right, let's see what she has to say. Saying that everyone with the with a label believes the same things, but it is looking at particular doctrines and just yeah. making sure that people know uh, the true gospel, what is a works-based yeah. religion yeah. Um, versus what is by grace through faith, and that is what Christianity is founded upon. Um, okay. Let me say one more, yeah. if you don't mind, one more Go clarifier, too. Ahead. I have spoken with... Okay, I'm sorry. We have to call this Wait, wait, out. wait. I think he's about Look, to. Oh, no, I, I will, but I'm calling out something that happened before. You will see the fakest... I hate you smile mean girls. Yeah. In okay. and let me say one more, if yeah. you don't mind, one more. <laughs> Did you see that? Ooh. There it goes again. This is the fake I hate you. I'm going to say I pray for you as I curse your name when you walk away. One more, if yeah. you don't mind, one more Go clarifier too. <laughs> ah. Oh, it's bad. Look at one that. More, if you don't mind, one more Go clarifier too. <laughs> I have spoken with, I would say it's a conservative estimate to say dozens like personal conversations with dozens of people from the LDS faith who have said to me, because of the chosen, I am finding myself closer to the, to Jesus and closer to grace than I ever have in my entire life that I am finding myself 
falling more in love with Jesus than the church. And that to me, um, and that would be a big shift for Mormons who really see. T- Look, it's like she won't have it. She won't have it. Well, yeah, I know you think they're good, but that would be a big shift from evil. And it would have only happened yesterday when it happened to you. <laughs> okay, keep going. I'm sorry. Church, the LDS church as the authority. So that's. No, I mean, I know, Pause. I know people. Pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Notice how she refuses to use the name, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. I'm sure it's such a huge shift. For the people of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints to feel close to Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's pretty bad, dude. That's pretty bad. Okay, so here we go. Let her finish. Who, for whom their church, LDS or Catholic or any any kind of formal religion, is in many almost like God is almost like the thing that they worship, the thing that is their connection to God. And as an evangelical, I passionately believe that you don't need anything formal or anything to, 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 to connect you to God, that you can have a direct relationship with Jesus. Okay, that's fine. Whatever he's saying. He's yeah, I like what Dallas is doing here because he's refusing to keep it only on the Mormons. He's yeah. saying, yeah, Mormons might have a different Jesus. There are some evangelicals that seem to have a really different concept of Jesus. I, yeah, I think the Chosen is great because it helps Mormons like come closer to Jesus than organized religion. And a lot of other people in other religions are experiencing the same thing. Yeah. I love how he's refusing to make this all about you the know, Mormons. You know, and is saying, hey, whatever problem you're pointing out also exists in basically any other religion so i don't think it's fair to focus just on the mormons you know he just wants to say get off my back i'm not allowed to have a couple buddies yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez, give me a break dang <laughs> all right okay we're, we're gonna do the next one here and uh the struggle bus is I, going to park the struggle bus is going dude, to make I, it I, into I, I can understand this woman the dude. reason why i am not Oh, okay. Well, this one, I don't know if you're going to like this one more. No, she, she actually redeems herself here okay, a little good. bit. Okay, okay. Okay. The reason why I am not concerned with some people say, well, I know there are Mormons who work with the company that distribute. The reason why that doesn't, to me, mean that someone should not watch The Chosen is because from what I've seen, Mormon theology is not influencing The Chosen. It right. is scripture and so there are lots wait she started the whole interview saying there were people concerned that mormon theology is influencing the chosen and then says okay so i'm going to drag you through this purity test just oh wait no but he confessed that the gypsy confessed that jesus they'd never met was the christ so the gypsy is getting out of the inquisition right now i get it he's passed the purity test theology is not influencing the chosen it is right. That's scripture. And so there are lots of different people of lots of different faiths that we work with that aren't necessarily influencing our work. There are people that would be like saying that you shouldn't listen to Relatable because Blaze TV distributes it. And the people who run Blaze TV might have, you know, different beliefs than I do. Yeah, they're Mormons. They're Mormons. Yeah, his name is Glenn Beck. That's what Dallas <laughs> says. Wait. She refuses to say it. Un- what a coward. What a coward. <laughs> Un- Ali so Dallas says it for her. Like, do the next two seconds. Oh, Dallas says it for okay, her. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll lead up to it again. Let's see. Let's, let's let it ruminate. Distributes it, and the people who run Blaze TV might have, you know, different beliefs than I do. Right. And so that is not Including my Including LDS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dallas. Well done. I like him. I, like him. I love Dallas Jenkins after this. this okay, is great. so f- final thoughts, man. Final thoughts. Uh, Brad, you go first. Oh, is that the end? That's the full that, end? Yeah, well, that's the end of the clips that had to do with Mormonism. It was like an hour long interview. That was okay, the cool, clips. Cool, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, dude, I don't know. I, I really, really appreciate Dallas Jenkins' really good example of what I think is actually solid Christ like behavior. Yeah. to be loving and caring and I think Ali is a very great example of just pure suburbanism just completely being a tribal little jerk and being incapable of even admitting the bias of the her own show she's a 6 out of 10 masquerading as a 9 out of 10 oh my gosh, and you're calling God. her religious bigotry okay it's religious religious bigotry not suburbanism you got a 6 out of 10 religious bigot masquerading as a 9 out wait, of 10 wait, 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 wait. Do why do her, look, card, her card, looks card, don't card. matter do you yeah. mean 6 out of 10 in the scale of bigotry are you referring to her looks 
I am definitely referring to her. <laughs> so here's my thing. I, I just, I don't know. It, it's, it's funny to me because they obviously share a faith tradition. Uh-huh. I, I just think Dallas looks like he's living it. Uh huh. She doesn't look like she is. She's what, 100% you mean, you mean guy based on rejection. I mean, the guy who's just spent five years building the number one show I would, about Jesus the, ever and seems I would to just be think, a little more Christ-like in regard to other people than the woman just sitting behind her desk, yeah, at, like yeah. yelling at people. Yeah, how about she talks to an actual member of the would LDS never. church? Until Glenn goes, listen, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. you keep this up. <laughs> You're going to be on the Drudge Report or whatever. But she's she's <laughs> like She's interviewing people like Lynn Wilder. As an authority, what well, the, by the heck? Way, before you lambast me for saying that, you know, I'm just some big fat judgmental person. Ahead, clarifier too. Remember, I was I have spoken with an interview where I had to look at that little fake smile. One more, yeah. if you don't you mind, one more clarifier too. That fake smile. I have the, spoken uh, with <laughs> the. Uh, um, oh, shoot, the I should. hate you smile. Yeah, the I hate you smile. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, I I also think uh, it's just great that you got. Ali Beth Stuckey, okay, anti Mormon, but then also he had Elijah Schaefer. Remember he had that yeah. offensive show on the Blaze. Yeah, he started putting out tweets that said that Mormons were going to hell. Yeah, yeah. And you guess what happened to Elijah Schaefer? You guys remember? Do you guys remember? Yeah. He got outed cheating on his wife, sleeping with a bunch of women at Turning Point. Yeah, uh, and sexually harassing other women who we work at the have police. to do the expose on your idea that a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Yes, actually references. L- every, I've never been at, wrong. At <laughs> all anti Mormons <laughs> are always adulterers. Every single one. And yeah. so Glenn fired him for you know uh, a grabby grabby with a bunch of women. It's like wow, huh? Crazy. We're going to hell. We're bad. You're cheating on your wife. You're banging interns. You're sexually assaulting co-hosts. But because we have the Indian book, we're the bad guys. But Jesus is all good with that. Yeah, yeah. Like, heaven, heaven forbid we think that the Lamanites are uh, will inherit the earth and will be a redeemed and blessed uh, generation while, you know, Andrew Jackson is sending the army to go kill him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, that was the 1840s worldview. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, okay. Yeah. Um, Lucas, any last thoughts before we go, bro? Um, I think it's just a cautionary oh, wait, tale shoot, to shoot, make shoot, sure. Hold on. Oh, we I got him muted. Yeah, I had you muted. I'm sorry. Uh, say it uh, again. What are your thoughts? I think it's a little bit of a cautionary tale to make sure that we don't just go and find somebody from a particular group that has what we want them to say and bring them on to yeah. whatever it is that we're doing and have them say it and then just believe it wholeheartedly. Like, go and talk to the person. Go to the car dealership of the car you actually want to know about mm-hmm. and talk to them. Not former employees, not the other dealership. Just go to the source and talk to them. Because okay. otherwise, you're actually... A just really learn the facts. You're a bad journalist if you're not doing that. Yeah. By the way, speaking of bad journalism... My wife was the first one that showed me this uh, this um, interview aired, and I hadn't seen the whole thing yet. But she was like, "What's going on at Ali Beth Stuckey's podcast?" Because there was like hundreds of comments, not just from Mormons, but also from um, n- non-members and just regular Christians. Tons of Mormons were saying, "I'm sorry, I followed you for years, but I'm gonna unsubscribe." And there was a lot of evangelicals who were like, "I'm sorry, I know members of the church, and this this is hateful. This is bigoted. This is not Christ-like. Oh, good. We're not gatekeepers." Like good. she got some serious ratio downvoting on that on that uh, podcast. So there is some uh, faith in humanity restored. I wish I could find the clip again where she does the "I hate you" smile. Oh, that's really close to which it. one was it? Was it the third clip? I'm not sure. Or was well, it the second clip? Well, the number remember. one question that oh, I... Got- sorry, sorry. Anyway, keep going, Brad. Okay, so uh, wh- while you're looking for that, uh-huh. the thing that I think is really interesting to watch here is she and Dallas share the same faith, you know? Obviously not. Well, uh, no, 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 no. Like, in name, they do. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, fine. They think paper. each other are going to heaven. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think this is the kind of thing where you've got to just recognize... When one of them's living it and the other does not appear to be. Yeah. You know? Okay. That's that that's actually that's let's across to me. Let's say one thing in favor of Allie. I'll say one thing in favor of her. How dare she you. is correct in the fact she's correct in the fact that the theological differences are important. They're very important in the sense that ours is much better. 
No, nah. that's just a fact. Brutal. <laughs> ours is ours is more. We're, let's not let's not try to do like the oh we're basically the same as you. We're also Christians, and because what their Athanasian Creed is the definition of Christian for them. Our, so let's like yeah, we have differences. Th- that's what we I'll have say. big differences. But, but what I'll say, Luke, is ours is more biblical. Ours is absolutely more in line with what the Bible says all throughout it. And yeah. I know, like, just look at the story of the Athanasian Creed itself, and you look at um, what they'll call Arian heresy and all of the ways, the, the arguments that were being made up until then, they, they just yeah. let it lie from the 300s on with something extra biblical and then decided, okay, this is where we're at. Now we're cutting out people like the LDS, like the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They're not Christian. Okay. That's not true. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. This is Midnight Strike Through Mormons. We'll see you guys in the next program. Hey, guys. This is Cardinal Ellis. I'm the creator of Midnight Mormons. Thank you so much for watching this video. We know in an attention economy, you could be spending your time elsewhere, but you chose to spend it here with us. For that, we are grateful. Before you go to the next video, please make sure that you hit the like button. It tells the algorithms that you like our content and will hopefully recommend more content in the future. Also, if you can subscribe to our channel, it's a great way to be alerted of more content we make. And if you press that bell icon next to the subscribe button, you'll be alerted on every video we make. We put a lot of hard work into these and we want you to see all of our videos. So please subscribe. Also, if you would like to contribute, if you're feeling generous, please consider a contribution to the channel through Venmo. We also have contributions that you can give us through PayPal. There will be links in the description of this video to both of those platforms. If you're a giving person that prefers working through Amazon, we also have an Amazon wish list. Much of the equipment that you see in our studio was purchased through Amazon and we're grateful if you could uh, contribute that way. Also, somewhere around like here, I'd say, and somewhere around like right here is going to be a recommendation for more of our content that you might like. So please click on another video and we'll see you there. Either way, we're glad to have you here. Thanks for hanging out with us. This is Midnight Strike Through Mormons. We will see you in the next video.